So welcome to the presentation. Um, we, we, we recently um, changed a good part of uh, um, the FBDEV code and flipped it over to uh, DRM in our Tumbleweed distribution. And I'm going to give an overview of what we did there and uh, what may come next from that work. And when I, when I prepared the presentation, it all looked so trivial, but it's actually the work of two years. Um, so let us start. Let us start with some history. So when Linux was first introduced, it just used text mode, and that wasn't a big problem because there was VGA, which comes with text mode built in. And at some point, the Linux kernel got ported uh, to other architectures which did not have, which did not have text mode. Um, so FBDEV was added uh, something like um, almost 30 years ago, uh, just for the purpose of providing a text mode terminal on hardware that doesn't have one built in. And after that, a lot of other uh, driver systems uh, came. Um, there is DRM. Um, there used to be X11 in user space for mode setting. And there were quite a number of user space libraries <coughs> specifically for hardware, um, for, for graphics hardware. Um, but this, these are not in use anymore. And there are also a number of um, failed attempts um, which are not relevant at all anymore. And well, the driver, the that multitude of drivers that exists um, is kind of mirrored on the compositor side. There was always X11, and there are now several Wayland compositors. Um, there's raw mode, where you just open a device file and start drawing to the provided memory buffers. Um, and there are also a number of, uh, of other approaches which are just not relevant anymore at all. And um, supporting all that in software is really a lot of work and not always possible. And um, today, the, the, the surviving architecture or the only relevant architecture is DRM in the kernel and Wayland-based compositing <clears throat> in user space. Um, there is still some X11 for compatibility, but that really only exists on top of Wayland. So the hardware mode setting provided by the XORG server is not, not relevant anymore. Um, so why is DRM the, um, the winner here or the the only relevant driver architecture for uh, for graphics drivers. That is, I think, mostly because DRM is able to uh, fulfill all the modern use cases. Um, modern hardware is quite complex when it comes to graphics. There's multiple connectors attached to it. Um, it has um, different uh, CRTCs. It has uh, different overlay planes of different features, and only DRM is uh, capable of representing all that. Um, also, DRM gives user space a way of testing configurations before they are applied, because not all configurations can always be applied under all circumstances. So user space usually wants to um, ask the driver or the DRM framework first if a certain configuration can actually be used in practice or if it needs to be rejected. And you can do that um, before actually setting a mode, uh, even if multiple devices are um, involved. And um, also, DRM is designed for hardware-based rendering and decoding, uh, things like um, um, 3D rendering or um, video decoding are kind of natural to DRM. And DRM does that by sort of multiplexing the graphics resources. Um, so you, when you interact with DRM, you usually 
interact with graphics buffers and send um, data or send uh, commands to the graphics cards. But what actually happens inside or how the, the um, commands are processed is up to the driver itself. Um, all these features and flexibility, they come at a cost, of course. And that is uh, code size. DRM is huge. The, uh, the, the estimates I've heard are that like 10% of the kernel source code is DRM. And most of that is in drivers. Um, I checked the uh, Tumbleweed kernel 519. And there the compiled, the compiled kernel is 13 megabyte. And the additional DRM drivers, um, which are in uh, modules, they are 8.5 megabyte. And on top of that, if you want acceleration of some kind, you need additional user space, which is also megabytes over megabytes. So um, in, the, in this form, DRM is not suitable uh, to fit into an init RD um, and um, run uh, Linux graphics from the early stages of boot. Um, what does fit is FBDEV, because FBDEV has an entirely different concept. FBDEV, uh, it's a device file that looks like a very, very simple graphics card um, with whatever hard you, hardware you have um, back in there. So there's really just video memory where you can read and write from and display something. And there's a way of uh, setting a video mode um, on a single connector, mostly. And that's already it. Um, so it's the most basic form of a graphics card. However, FBDEV in its simplicity has another um, big advantage or had another big advantage over DRM. And that is uh, these hardware agnostic drivers that were provided by FBDEV. Um, there were drivers for uh, VGA. There were drivers for VESA, for um, AFI, and also for um, open firmware, which is based on device tree. And with these drivers, um, they were small, and you could build them into the kernel. And those, until recently, provided the early boot graphics output. Uh, until the point where DRM uh, takes over. So, so let's take a quick look at how this works. When you switch on the computer, uh, system firmware boots up, and part of the boot up is the graphics firmware. And the system firmware and graphics firmware, they have some protocol in place and for, for setting up the display. And as a result of that, um, there is then a graphics mode and a graphics frame buffer, some are video memory. Um, there is a resolution and a certain uh, color format. Um, and that is usually based on one of the standards listed here. So VGA and VESA in the old days, modern computers have UEFI graphics drivers <clears throat> and um, if you're on an on a, uh, embedded system, the firmware sets up the, the, um, the frame buffer for displaying, and there is a device tree entry, uh, which lists the, um, the properties of that frame buffer. So address range, uh, color format, and resolution. Linux acquires that information from the system by whatever means uh, there are, or like uh, reading registers, uh, reading device tree, nodes, and so on. And with that information, it creates a platform device. And then the uh, FBDEV driver for whatever, um, for whatever um, backend you have bins to that uh, platform device and provides graphics output via FBDEV. But FBDEV also has one major problem, <clears throat> it's pretty old and really not up to the test of modern hardware. And that's why user space is slowly losing the ability to actually do anything with, with um, FBDEV uh, drivers. And what 
you're left to as a user is um, the plain text mode console, uh, which is not not really nice for most users, I think. So um, the solution here is clear. We needed a hardware a, a DRM replacement for those hardware agnostic FPDEF drivers. And that is where simple DRM <coughs> uh, comes into play. It's a fairly simple regular Linux driver within the uh, DRM subsystem, but it provides exactly that what we need um, for, for a modern user space. Uh, the graphics output is still pre-configured by the firmware, so you cannot really do mode setting. Um, you cannot really do software rendering. But for our use cases, that is more than enough. Um, if you build it into the kernel, uh, you can have early boot graphics. So when the, um, uh, when the uh, Linux kernel boots up, you get um, DRM um, output from the first seconds. And also, if there is no, um, no graphics driver, no DRM driver available at all for your hardware, um, simple DRM is usually good enough as a fallback. Um, so at least you get uh, the um, typical desktop uh, features and uh, productivity apps like a web browser or an email program <clears throat> and can use those um, with simple DRM until uh, there is a driver available for your hardware. And as a side effect of that, a lot of old hardware now becomes available on modern systems uh, where there was simply no driver and compatible user space before. So if you still have an old, an old card from the early 2000s or the, um, the 1990s uh, that is capable of um, sort of modern graphics, uh, it will probably work if you can get it to work in a in a modern computer. <clears throat> so the driver itself, um, as I said, is a fairly simple Linux driver. But combined with DRM, uh, there are a number of interesting properties. Um, one of them is that all the graphics um, buffers in DRM and simple DRM they're in system memory. So you have now unlimited uh, video memory available. And only when you do a page flip and update the screen, then you copy from system memory into the firmware provided buffer uh, so that um, the user can see the update. And part of the update process, DRM um, requires damage handling. And damage handling means that if you have your screen and you only update a small portion of the screen, then only that needs to be redrawn. So if you move your cursor over the screen, you don't want to redraw the whole screen, just that little uh, area where the cursor has been moved. Um, FPDF doesn't really provide that. Um, so DRM gives us here a good chance of being faster than uh, what we could do with FPDEF. Also, as part of the damage handling, um, we can do color mode conversion, uh, which is another feature in DRM, which isn't easily available in FPDEF. Um, that's quite important because modern user space usually expects 32-bit pixel size. And um, a good, good number of hardware doesn't support that, either because it's um, uh, too old or maybe too new or some embedded display, which simply doesn't have that mode. And DRM just converts on the fly. User space can use whatever format it wants, and that firmware provided frame buffer uses another format, and the conversion happens in the driver. Um, as I said, none of that is possible with FPDEF, and those are kind of the, um, the basic features that are 
expected by today's user space. Okay, number of questions so about um, mode setting have come up in the chat. Uh, yeah, so mode setting uh, is the process of switching um, display modes on a screen, or if you're just um, uh, just changing changing the uh, content of the screen, that's also kind of mode setting. It's usually then called page flipping. Okay. Um, okay, uh, I mentioned that um, when the um, when the um, when the system starts, then simple DRM takes over the firmware frame buffer, and later um, during the boot, the boot process, um, the actual hardware native DRM driver gets loaded from disk and needs to take over that. <coughs> Uh, that um, hardware. And for this to work, first it needs to kick out the, um, the uh, simple uh, DRM driver. Otherwise, they would get in conflict and uh, results are undefined. And that is what we call the um, device handover process. <clears throat> and it's done via hot unplugging. So when the actual driver Uh, when the actual uh, driver gets loaded, um, it will uh, it will kick out the uh, simple DRM driver and can then take over hardware. And this used to be done in FBDEV, but this never really worked in FBDEV. Uh, we had bug reports <coughs> where the native driver came try to kick out the generic FBDEV driver. And that FBDEV driver was waiting for user space um, to close the uh, device file. And user space was waiting for the new DRM driver to create its own um, device file. And that was then um, waiting for um, the uh, FBDEV driver to go away. So there was this waiting cycle and that essentially deadlocked our uh, our booting process and i think we fixed that by, by disabling fbdev um, uh, support in our user space um, um, boot up um, this logo program Plymouth is its name um, to just not use fbdev and that's not a problem with DRM. DRM fully supports hard, hardware um, hot unplugging. So we can just hot unplug the, um, the simple DRM device, <clears throat> and user space can um, handle that later on. That's part of the uh, multiplexing uh, property that DRM provides. And it's quite nice. It now works reliably. And We've moved that code for doing all this handover stuff into a new module, um, which we call Aperture Helpers. And just as we moved it into that new module, another user showed up, because apparently um, the, um, the virtualization code needs to remove graphics drivers before it can assign the graphics card to the, uh, the uh, virtualized guest systems. And they can now use our aperture helpers as well. So that's a nice, uh, a nice side effect from cleaning up that code. Um, there is, before I continue, there is quite a bit of discussion in the uh, in the uh, chat here. If you want to ask a question, it's much easier for me if you just uh, switch on your camera so that I can see you. Because following the chat and talking is not possible for me. So if you have a question, please switch on your camera, and um, I, I, will, um, I will answer your question. OK, so another thing um, that we needed to fix to make this work is the um, DRM module size. If we needed to reorganize the modules and um, minimize the amount of DRM code that needs to be built into the kernel binary uh, by good extent. Um, there's one 
uh, extreme example given here in the slides, which is KMS helpers. And that went down from 450 kilobyte to 240 kilobyte, simply by removing the display port code and putting that into a separate module. Display port is not needed by a simple DRM or any of the other early boot DRM stuff and can be loaded later on by a module. The KMS helper itself is kind of the core um, DRM mode setting code, so you really cannot do DRM without it. Mm. Um, okay. Um, a number of legacy components, uh, they still needed workarounds. And uh, one is the X server, which somehow is in the business of scanning the PCI bus for devices. Um, ideally, it would just open a device file and use that because that's what all the the, um, the Wayland compositors do these days, and that's how it's supposed to work. But what X does is scan the PCI bus, look for devices, and then try to match the PCI devices it found to the device files provided by the Linux kernel. And that kind of works in most cases, but it doesn't work if your device is not on the PCI bus. And as I said, that frame buffer, which is used by a simple DRM, is just a platform device. And we needed a patch for the X server to make the driver work. Um, it's, I think, just one or two lines, but still it needed to be added. Mm -hmm. But X now works out of the box. And the other thing is uh, NVIDIA's proprietary driver, um, which does weird, weird things with the text console. Um, usually, DRM drivers, they have their, uh, they emulate an FBDEV device for the text um, mode so they can present the text console to the user. Um, NVIDIA's driver, they reuse the FE FBDEV driver and whenever you go from your know, graphics test of it, that NVIDIA driver, whenever you go from you know, your uh, graphics environment to the text console, you're kind of doing a driver switch and then the FEFB driver, it renders the text mode. This is kind of strange and not at all how it's supposed to work. Um, I tried to fix that, but it's almost impossible. Even some of the NVIDIA driver is available on source. But so what we um, what we did here, uh, we simply decided that if you install the proprietary driver from NVIDIA, um, you still get the old FBDEV FE driver for your text console and the new driver <coughs> and the new DRM based uh, boot stack is disabled. As far as I know, NVIDIA promised to fix that and they want to come up with something, but I haven't heard anything since then. I guess either I will take another look at it or maybe they will provide, provide better uh, DRM support in the future. Um, yeah, so those two legacy components, uh, they needed an update to work with, with the new driver. Um, it's kind of telling that these two components show up here, X server and the NVIDIA driver, always those two. Okay, um, <clears throat> so where is it now? Um, we switched simple DRM on in Tumbleweed during the 5.18 uh, timeframe. Um, we tried to do it earlier, but there were bugs, so we had to revert. And then at 5.18, it was ready. Um, it's also switched on by default in Fedora 36, which is the most recent version, I think. Alpine Linux, they were the first. I think they already switched earlier this year. 
And Ubuntu, I think they either have switched to the DRM stack fully or they are in the process. So when I look, they have this enabled as a module and I guess they use it. If not now, then soon. So um, just from these distributions, I think it's fair to say that FBDEV is kind of gone now or pretty soon. And uh, the full DRM stack is kind of the, um, the baseline for Linux graphics. Also, there is some um, hardware support, which we enabled. And that is um, most prominently the Apple M1, which doesn't have a DRM driver yet. There is one in the works. And until then, <clears throat> it uses a simple DRM. Uh, with the firmware provided frame buffer, and you can you can run Linux on top of that until the actual driver is ready. And um, they were um, the developers for that system. They even sent me patches. So the Apple M1 and uh, the follow-up models they come with 30-bit color depth, I think. So you get 10 bits per color channel <clears throat> on these systems. And they provided uh, they provided a patch for for implementing that in simple uh, DRM. And not listed here, but I want to uh, say that once more, a lot of old hardware which um, was not um, available to modern desktop environments or modern uh, graphics, the modern graphics stacks in general are now available via the um, about DRM driver. Okay, so with this in place, um, there are a number of ideas, and I just want to outline, outline a few ideas um, here. The first is uh, that there's OFDRM, and that is kind of the same as simple DRM, but for power PCs. Um, the power PC, uh, the environment is different enough so that it makes sense to write a separate driver for that. Um, I got it merged last week, and as soon as it shows up in Tumbleweed, I'll enable it on our power PC builds as well. Um, <clears throat> one feature that is currently actively being discussed, <clears throat> uh, both internally and also in the wider community, is running the text console in user space. Uh, that would, first of all, allow for much nicer font rendering and much better internationalization. Um, it would also allow for things you usually see in, in desktop environments, like listed here the night mode, or a multi-screen or multi-device output. Um, I think not all of that is possible with the current text console, and some things might be, but might be much harder. One interesting idea is to have something like a simple Wayland compositor built into the text mode console. So when you are in text mode, um, text mode Web browsers are usually not much fun to use. So you can just um, then type, I don't know, Firefox, Chromium, whatever you use. And you would get a, a browser window as part of your um, text mode console. <clears throat> um, it would act like a tiling window manager in some way. So I mean, there are prototypes for this, as far as I know. And recently, there was the Plumbers conference where all the Linux kernel and uh, lower user space developers come together, and things like those were, were discussed there. Um, another idea is uh, better graphics support for KDAM and KXEC. <clears throat> um, currently, when we boot up, we get our first frame buffer from the firmware. And as soon as uh, the hardware the, the hardware driver takes over the device, that frame buffer will be gone. 
And if you do a kdump or kexec, at that point, there will be no graphics output. So the idea here is to record some kind of minimal state for, for kdump. And when you boot your, your um, kdump kernel, just look at that state, which describes the, um, the last frame buffer that was being displayed on the screen and use that together with simple DRM to get some basic initially initial graphics output, um, even on um, KDAMP and KXEC systems. Um, otherwise, I think you've had to wait until the, uh, the, um, the, the hardware native driver gets reloaded, which can take some time or might even be too late. I'm almost done, but um, before we close, some acknowledgments. Um, big thanks goes to uh, Javier Martinez Canillas, who provided a lot of um, patches, lots of features, and bug reports um, for simple DRM and all the infrastructure that um, is required um, to make it work. And he's also responsible for <coughs> enabling simple DRM and DRM, um, the full DRM stack in Fedora. Um, then big thanks goes out to Stefan Dusch, who helped me a lot with the NVIDIA driver, and Michal Zuchanek, who helped me a lot with uh, PowerPC and answered lots of my questions there. And of, all, of course, also um, big thanks to the OpenSUSE communities and the Linux communities that were involved. They provided um, feedback and bug reports and discussions. So, Big thank you to, uh, to all of you. Um, the live demo, which is announced here, is on uh, your system, if you want. Um, if you have a, a recent tumbleweed, uh, go check the kernel log and grab for DRM. And it should say something about simple DRM. And if you want to try this out and how see how that works on your system, uh, boot with the uh, boot the kernel with the no mode set <coughs> parameter, and when you have no mode set, even then the hardware native drivers um, provided by DRM they will not load. So system will start up with simple DRM and simple DRM <coughs> will just remain in place uh, um, for the whole session. Okay, so much about the presentation. I think we have some time for uh, Q&A, if there are any questions. So there are actually two questions in the chat. Yeah. One uh, regarding the first half of the presentation, I think, was from Martin Wilk. But then what's a driver worth that can't do mode setting? Doesn't it mean that the hardware may stay in a very basic low resolution mode all the time? Um, Yes and no, because it depends on the firmware. Um, on some systems, I guess some older systems, um, you have the option of changing that either in GRUB, or I think even the Linux kernel has some feature somewhere to do mode setting on some systems. Um, it's all pre-configured, of course, but at least you have a chance of setting um, the resolution beforehand. And from, from my experience, even on systems um, where, you, where you cannot really affect that because firmware provides some defaults that we really have no influence over, um, it's usually good enough. I mean, even if you have just 1,000 to 700, whatever the numbers are, um, that is okay. -ish for the desktop still. And the alternative is um, that you have only text mode. And from that perspective, it's really a big step forward. But right, there's no mode setting. So if you really um, want all the features and bells and whistle and stuff, you need a hardware driver. Yeah. Next okay. question, please. Then Matthias Pucker has, has raised his hand. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi, Thomas. Uh, 
Uh, I have a question regarding, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I have a question regarding uh, uh, the future of uh, FBDEF. Will it uh, is the is it planned to remove it completely from the kernel? I'm uh, asking because I think we already had a discussion in the past about like really small displays which could be like for example made of LEDs of eight by eight LEDs uh, display that are right now. Uh, implemented with FPDEF and what would be the solution for that? So um, I don't think that FPDEF will be removed uh, in the near future or maybe in my lifetime, I don't know. So this, uh, once it's merged into the kernel and once as the, when there are still users, these things don't disappear. So don't worry about that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so ideally we would see uh, a shift from the remaining FBDEF users towards DRM, but for some hardware it really is complicated because um, the systems are so old and there are not maybe not enough resources or it's too slow. Um, we try to solve some of those problems, um, but they are really hard problems. Um, yeah, so until, uh, I, let's just say, until we have DRM that is uh, as, as good and as fast as FBDEF, even on uh, the really obscure hardware, um, FBDEF is not going to be removed, so don't worry about that. Okay, thanks. Another question from the chat was, uh, mm. I think about the NVIDIA drivers. When you say proprietary, does that include the open variant on GitHub? There's an open variant on GitHub. Um, no. Oh, sure. that new one, yeah, I remember. Uh, that new one, I don't think that uh, the new one is much different from the old one in those regards. Um, so the the um, the, uh, the Nvidia driver that most people use these days it's um, kind of a binary core which has all the features and the uh, the secret sauce and uh, around that is some open source some wrappers more or less and those you can change. And um, I think what they did with the new drivers, they used a good, uh, they moved a good part of the proprietary core logic into the devices or the device firmware. And <clears throat> the rest is probably still what they used to ship uh, with the old proprietary drivers. And that I, that is probably the same as before. Um, Is that helpful or? I hope so. <laughs> uh, at least Stefan Tersch said that he will check later about this question. Uh, I, have, I have no big hopes on NVIDIA, so <laughs> sorry. Um, there's another uh, chat question by Andreas Ferber. I'm not sure if it's directed towards me or uh, <clears throat> yeah, FBDEF emulation. Um, there's a question how the FBDEF emulation works with DRM. Um, let's talk about that. So DRM uh, provides a, a feature or an additional module where you can emulate an FBDEF device <clears throat> so that even old programs that only support FBDEF can still run with the, um, with the DRM driver, um, but that is um, only good enough. Um, so when you switch it on, it will provide um, it will provide the necessary interfaces that you that a user space FBF program would expect, but it is um, 
to a certain amount, it's slower. And um, I think it also has some, some memory overhead in certain cases. Um, we mostly use it these days for providing <coughs> the text mode console by uh, DRM. Um, I'm regularly working on improving that so that more um, FBDEV drivers and more FBDEV hardware runs um, under DRM with acceptable performance and little overhead, but it's also a complicated, um, complicated pro uh, problem because DRM and FBDEV, they are different at some fundamental levels how they treat video memory. <clears throat> and that is um, a can of worms and leads to lots of problems and workarounds and fixes. Um, so it takes a lot of time to get that working. Um, it is, to come back to the actual question, it is a real F, that, um, FBDEV emulation is a real FBDEV device. Um, but probably not as good as if you had an FB dev driver for that specific hardware. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Uh, this is Joe. Uh, can you hear me, Thomas? Um, so there was some talk maybe a couple of years ago, uh, it's more of a, a joke feature, but it was about having graphical uh, kernel panics, like the message that you have uh, when the kernel panics would be similar to the Windows blue screen of death. And so it was more of a, of a troll, but people were saying, is it possible? And uh, um, so the question is uh, for you, would uh, simple DRM be in the picture for that? What are the, like, are all the pieces in place and someone just needs to write the code or, or uh, it's more complex than that? that would, yeah, that would be a, a hack week project, I guess. <laughs> right. uh, I mean, it's all there. Um, it just, it's so what you need, hmm. excuse me, what you need uh, for this to work is to to print the kernel arrows onto the screen as soon as the, uh, the arrow happens should be doable. It's really just that no one has bothered doing that. It's maybe not a very useful uh, feature to have a Linux blue screen. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Andreas? For the links to the drivers. So what I'm seeing in the drivers video FB dev then is that both the simple FB as well as the EFI FB drivers then are part of the FB dev. And I wonder how um, the simple DRM then coexists with those drivers, especially if you say that we still need FB dev for some NVIDIA or other, um, let's say, fringe drivers. Um, yeah. Basically, at some point, well, we need to have a mapping between what the hardware describes that it has as hardware to which driver of those two then loads. Yeah. Um, uh, so first of all, it is not supposed to really coexist. Um, there should be a config switch that you have either one or the other. So either you have the simple DRM driver or the um, AFI or uh, other equivalents in, um, uh, in, in FBDEV enabled. And for coexisting, um, we simply patch the kernel here. Um, <clears throat> there is a tableau read. There is a, a kernel argument um, which specifically changes that, um, I forgot the name, but when that argument is given, then simple DRM is not being loaded, but the um, 
FB dev equivalent like AFB or simple FB or Visa FB or whatever. And we use that um, to do that switch, which is required by the proprietary NVIDIA kernel, uh, the proprietary NVIDIA driver. And when you install the RPM, um, the RPM will set the necessary flex on the kernel command line so that you get the correct driver stack um, for, for the NVIDIA driver. Okay.